Hello everybody, my name is Smarty, short for Smarty Reads, and welcome back. Today I'm going to read chapter 3 of In Business with Mallory. It's called A Parent Conference. Let's begin. For you, I walk into the kitchen and hand my parents an envelope. Mom puts the envelope down on the counter and hands me the phone. Most days I love phone calls, but not today. Today I have to do something, I have something important I need to do. Hello, I say, I say in my, I'm not in the mood to talk voice. Hey, says Joey, want to be by the wish pond in five minutes? If you bring cheeseburger, I can teach her how to dance on her back legs. I saw someone te teaching a cat on TV. I saw someone teaching a cat to dance on TV and I, but I don't let Joey finish. Maybe later, I tell him. Right now, I don't have time to teach my cat to dance. I pick up the envelope off the counter. You need to open this, I say to Mom. Mom smiles as she takes it from me, but she stops smiling when she when she sees what's written on the outside. A parent conference, she says out loud. I wonder why Miss Day Mrs. Daly wants to see us, Dad says. Mom opens the envelope, and when she reads the note inside, she starts smiling again. Mrs. Daly doesn't want to see us, Mom says. Mallory does. It's conference time, I tell my parents. I pull two chairs together so my parents can sit down. I talk to them like I'm a teacher. We need to talk about Mallory. Is she okay, says Dad. He looks like he's trying not to laugh. I give Dad a, this is serious. Mal it's a serious look. Mallory is okay, but she could be doing better. Really? asks Mom. How could she be doing better? I give my parents an encouraging look. I wasn't going to tell you this, but since you asked, I stopped talking. I feel like I've got an extra large peanut butter and marshmallow sandwich stuck in my throat. Telling parents how their child could be doing better isn't as easy as I thought. Especially if you're going to tell them something they might not want to hear. Dad looks at his watch. Sweet potato, I have to get to work. The store opens early on Saturdays. Can you please, can you tell us quickly what the problem is? I clear my throat. It's complicated. And then below, and then in the bottom, there's Mallory holding up a sheet. And then there's Mallory's parents sitting on chairs. Let's uncomplicate this, he says. I'll start a sentence and you fill in the blank. I nod my head. Okay, here it goes, says Dad. I invited my parents to a conference to tell them I could be doing better if... Now you fill in the rest of the sentence. Even though it's not easy, I finish Dad's sentence. sentence. I invited my parents to a conference to tell them I could be doing better if they would buy me the perfect purse. Mallory, we discussed this, says Mom. That purse is expensive and unnecessary. Well, I can't think of one good reason to buy it. I can, I tell Mom. I can think of ten very good reasons to buy the perfect purse. Before Mom and Dad can say anything, I start reading. Ten reasons why I, Mallory McDonald, need to buy that perfect purse. Number one, the perfect purse is stylish. It comes with ten designer covers. Number two, the perfect purse is special. It comes with a sparkly pin. Reason number three, the the fur the perfect purse is versatile. You can use it as a purse, a tote, or a carry-on. Reason number four, why the perfect purse is practical. It has a waterproof cover for rainy days. Reason number five, the perfect purse is economical. You will never you will never have to buy another purse. Reason number six. The perfect purse is exclusive. Limited quantities are available. Reason number seven. The perfect purse is chic. Fashionable girls everywhere are carrying it. Reason number eight. I love having the perfect purse. It'll be like having a new best friend. Reason number nine. Marianne is getting the perfect purse, so Marianne is getting the perfect purse. I need to get one so we can match. Reason number ten. If I get the perfect purse, I'll be perfectly happy. My happiness will make me a better daughter, a better sister, and a better student, too. Mallory, you sound like a commercial, Dad says when I finish reading. Even worse than sounding like a commercial, says Mom, is that you sound spoiled. Just because Marianne is getting one doesn't 
me, you can too. But I need to get one. Marianne and I are planning to get matching purses. Please, I say to Mom. Please, I say to my parents. You and Marianne don't always have the, get the same things, Mom says. She didn't get a cat when you got cheeseburger. I know how I don't know how we got on the subject of cats when we were supposed to be talking about purses. I didn't get a cat, I remind Mom. I found her. She, everyone gets different things, says Dad, and you are not getting the purse. Will you at least think about it, I ask. But both of the, my parents shake their heads no at the same time. Mallory, this is the last time we're going to discuss this, says Mom. Mom stands up. Conference time is over. She puts her chair back at the table. She, she, Dad puts her. Dad puts his chair back too. He kisses me on the forehead. I'm going to work. After Dad leaves, I, I go onto the family. I go into the family room and plop down on the couch with cheeseburger. Max and his dog Champ are watching a show I don't even like. And then at the bottom, there's Mallory's dad and Mallory. I don't care. All I can think about is my parent conference. My conference didn't go well. If my parents got graded on conference behavior, my parents would get a U for uncooperative. When I hear the mall mail truck, I run up it to see if I got anything. The postman hands me a stack of letters. Joey's playing in the front of his yard. He waves to me. I wave back. Then I look through the mail to see if there's anything for me, and there is. A letter from Marianne. I sit down in front of the mailbox and rip it open. And then through the side, there's Mallory near the mailbox reading Marianne's letter. Mallory, good, dear Mallory, good news. My mom bought me the perfect purse. I can't wait till I wear mine. I can't wait till you wear yours. I can't wait till we match. See you soon. And when I do, everything will be perfect, 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 especially our purses. Love, Marianne. When I'm done reading, I lean back against the mailbox. I can feel the cold steel of the pull through my sweater. Marianne is wrong about one thing. Everything will not be perfect, perfect, perfect. Not if I don't have the perfect purse, too. While I'm busy imagining Marianne with the purse and me without mine, Joey walks over to our front porch. Want me to teach Cheeseburger some tricks now? I shake my head no. I feel like skateboarding. You feel like skateboarding? I shake my head no again. We could go to the wish pond and skip rocks. I shake my head no a third time. I don't feel like it. And then at the bottom there's Mallory saying no to Joey and yeah. Joey makes a mad face. You never feel like playing anymore. I'm sorry, I tell Joey. I don't want him to think I don't want to be his friend. I try to explain about the perfect purse. When, I, when I'm done explaining, I look at Joey. He always understand, understands things, but this time he doesn't look like he understands at all. Mallory, who cares about a dumb old purse? Even though I can see Joey doesn't care, I do. And even though, and I know it's someone else who might who might care too? We can play some. Uh, we can play some other time. I tell Joey. I scoop up cheeseburger. Right now, I have to make a phone call. And that's the end of that chapter. Next time, I'll read a phone call. Bye, everyone.